to yet another video now today I'm using the first person shooter template now this template was recently updated and it was pretty fun to play around with and there's also different ways uh, that you can uh, create a uh, interesting game using this template and the great thing about this is that we can use it for today's tutorial now what I want to do is create a navigation system so that the player can know where he's meant to go what is his objective and this arrow is constantly going to be pointing at a VAT objective so uh, let's get started first thing we need to do is uh, create this small um, little node here whereas when we press the escape button it's going to shut down the program because that's the easiest way to really get out of the program before we start because if not you're going to be faffing around trying to figure out how to close the game and uh, probably having to open the uh, the uh, task manager to force stop it at least that's how I managed to get out of it uh, so that's probably going to be a nice addition uh, to, be able to, to be able to work faster uh, now that I've told you that we need an arrow so what we're going to do is I'm just going to import this arrow that I made earlier it's just a cube that I extruded out a tiny bit and also I have set it at a certain position whereas if you look at a v -Q, uh, the, the arrow if I rotate it it never leaves the camera and it's not too big that it um, hides the view so uh, since it can never clip out of the uh, view uh, that's going to help us a lot but the thing is if we move our camera around the arrow isn't following and that's a problem so let's select the arrow shift select the camera press ctrl p to parent them together and now when we move the camera the arrow is as if it is part of it which is great now let's set up some logic to make the thing move select the arrow and go to the uh, the um, property tab add a new node tree and we can call this look at because it's going to look at the objective over here we are going to uh, look at the uh, look at node and once you've seen the look at node we can set the width to y because you have to and uh, we are now going to need to set uh, some values to get the position from and to the object from is going to be obviously the arrow and it's going to be pointing to a specific location and the action is going to be happen is the rotation right here uh, so before I start this method I just want to shout out to Qu Quantum Coder because he helped me uh, figure out how to do this so thank you very much what we need to do is we need to go to the transform and get a V object location once we have the location uh, activated we can duplicate it because there are two uh, locations the from and to obviously the location from is going to be our, the V arrows location but since we've already made the script with, uh, the, uh, with the arrow selected it's applied the script to it which means that the, by default it's going to get the arrow as the the default object but if you wanted to you could always select it uh, right there or you don't need to now we need to have an object to uh, uh, to uh, be the destination I'm gonna select these stairs over here and uh, once we have our objective selected we need to define the action what's it gonna do it's gonna rotate it so we got to tell it to rotate set rotation set object rota rotation because the object in question is going to be the arrow so obviously like before we don't need to set the arrow to be the uh, owner of uh, the action because it is the owner of the action we don't need to set it as the actor of the action is what I meant to say now we need to add an on update node because we want this rotation uh, to take effect every single frame so the uh, location of the objective is constantly being updated and, and now what we need to do is a few more uh, node things for any other object uh, to move around in the scene or face somebody in the scene like if you wanted a, a, a robot to always face uh, the player this setup is what you want although we've parented this arrow to the camera and the camera is rotating itself so we need to fix some of the errors that the camera is going to have uh, the effect that the camera is going to have on the arrow so what we need to do is we need to grab a rotation math 
if I can type rotation math and we can plug that between the look out uh, look at and the set object rotation we can leave it at com uh, multiply and we can press shift D to duplicate it we can now plug the result into the bottom of the first com uh, multiply and set this one uh, not to multiply but to get inverse because we need to inverse the camera's rotation or something like that I'm not sure. Quantum, quantum coder is the one that explained this to me. I'm not sure I understand, but I do know that it works. So now we need to get the uh, location, get the object's location. No, it's not. Yeah, we need to get object's rotation, not location, uh, rotation. And that rotation is going to be plugged into the rotation value of the math node, which is going to get the inverse and is going to multiply it to add the rotation onto the arrow. Uh, we need to set this to global and we need to select the camera to be the object of which we want to extrapolate the uh, rotation. And now we can actually uh, clear the project and we can run this uh, project to make sure everything is working fine and if it is working then we our arrow should constantly be looking at our staircase or our stairs uh, once this runs you should see and there we go now our arrow is constantly looking at our stairs right here as you can see and uh, that is mission accomplished however now that we have this set up, it's up to you to figure out what you want this to be looking at. The only trouble is if we uh, look at the ground right here, we do have a small shadow just above my head where the arrow is actually pointing slightly. And uh, to remove that shadow, I have made a tutorial on it, but I can do it in the same node tree right now. We can get the on initialize node and we can set the set object uh, visible right here and we can plug that in and the object in question is like I said going to be the arrow so we don't actually need to fill it in like I've already explained multiple times and we want it to be not visible so leave that unchecked but it's not the object that we don't want to have visible it's the shadow and there we go now you won't have any small shadow being visible uh, obviously this is just a minor detail but it is uh, useful to know now then thank you very much for watching this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it i definitely did because i didn't know how to do this a few hours ago thank you very much for watching and uh, please subscribe or not if you don't want to but it's useful and it helps me out a lot thank you very much for watching see you in the next one